Happy New Year, everybody. I am Crystal with MrsHappyHomemaker.com, Crystal Light with MrsHappyHomemaker.com, and I am making up a New Year's feast. I got my New Year's shirt on. I believe in Crystal Light because I believe in me. Thank you, eBay. Vintage, like 1980-something. Love it. It's like my, my whole mantra when your name is Crystal Light. So, for my New Year's feast today, I am making up some baby back ribs, some collard greens, some black eyed peas, and some cornbread. Now, I haven't been making many videos this last month. I've had me a little bit of, of health issues going on. Many of y'all know that this summer I hurt, my, I hurt my leg and it ended up being some pretty uh, serious nerve damage to my leg and a condition called foot drop. And so, since that happened, I've had some issues with not being able to feel my leg and sometimes I fall. So I ended up hurting my hip on top of my leg. So I've been a little bit immobile this past month and had some other health issues going on. So you yeah, haven't seen my face a whole lot, but hopefully 2022 will bring me a whole lot of good health. That's what I'm hoping for. I'll eventually get back to my studio kitchen, but right now it's still a little bit hard for me to get around. So I'm recording from my home kitchen. Now I sprinkled these ribs with some barbecue seasoning last night, front and back, rubbed it in real good, and covered them up and put them in my refrigerator overnight. And I have my oven preheated to 300 degrees. I'm gonna cover them up with some clean aluminum foil. And I'm gonna slow roast them. Now I'm gonna slow roast these in my oven, 300 degrees for three hours. Last night I took a 16 ounce package of black eyed peas, just like these, and put them inside my pot here, covered them up with water, and let them soak overnight. Now you can see the liquid uh, is brown colored like the peas, and I am going to dump out this liquid, rinse off my peas, rinse out my pot, and then I'm gonna put the peas back in here and cover them with chicken broth. So I've got my black eyed peas uh, drained and rinsed off, and I am going to cover it with chicken stock. You can also use water, but I find the chicken stock or chicken broth uh, gives it way more flavor. Now I'm also gonna be cooking up some collard greens and I am going to cook up some country ham that's in my fridge that I need to use. And I'm gonna use those, uh, that country ham, those country ham drippings and the country ham and my collard greens. And I'm gonna take some of that country ham and put it here in my, with my black eyed peas too. I'm going to take this over to my stove top. I'm going to set it on high and bring it to a boil. Once it starts boiling, I'm going to turn it to simmer, cover it up, and let it simmer while I start working on my other stuff. So in my pot here, I've got black eyed peas cooking. Here, I'm going to cook up some country ham. This is my favorite country ham. It's actually from my hometown of Ashbury, North Carolina. It's called, Phil it's called Phillips Brothers Country Ham. I've been getting it since I was a kid. Uh, I live in Georgia now, but each time I go home, I always get big old packs of them to bring home to cook because it's my favorite. <laughs> so I'm going to cook this up. Uh, I'm going to cook it up on both sides. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put my collard greens in here along with the ham drippings. Take all my country ham out and put it in my bowl, set it aside. And now some of y'all may think I'm a little bit crazy with this, but trust me on this. Um, have y'all ever had a red eye gravy? If you have, then you know that you put coffee in red-eye gravy with country ham drippings. If you have not, then you're going to look at me like I'm plum crazy when I do this, but trust me on this. I've got a cup of coffee I just made, and I'm going to pour half this cup of coffee in the bottom of my pot here. Save the other half for me. And I'm going to stir this up and get my country ham drippings broken up. And off the bottom, greens that I've already washed and cut up and add those to it. I'm going to pour, this is eight cups with the water here. I'm going to take a little bit more and just enough water so I can cover the greens up. Now this country ham that I just cooked, I'm going to take it and I'm going to tear it and put it in my pot with these greens. And I'm telling you that little half a cup of coffee it reduces the bitterness of the greens. Think about red eye gravy if you've ever had it before. Think about that flavor paired with greens. It's not immersed in it, but it's just enough. Just enough. I'm also gonna take some of this country ham and I'm gonna add it to my, my black eyes. Ooh, that piece is so hot. <laughs> That was a huge hunk of garlic. I just chunked it up and I'm gonna add that to it. Cause that will break down nice. 
I take me some salt, give it a good seasoning of salt and a good seasoning of pepper. So that's boiling. I've turned my heat down low and I put my lid on this and I'm gonna let this cook on low for about two hours. So I am seasoning my cast iron skillet or greasing my cast iron skillet with some Crisco. I've got my oven preheated to 400 degrees. I'm gonna put this skillet in there and let it get warm while I make my cornbread batter. Getting that skillet hot first before I put that cornbread batter in is gonna give it a nice crust. Now I'm gonna make my cornbread batter. I'm making my shortcut cheesy cornbread, which is a shortcut recipe, but let me tell you, it tastes just like the best, the best homemade cornbread. So I'm gonna start off with two boxes of Jiffy cornbread mix. I'm gonna add two thirds of a cup of milk to that. And then I've got two eggs right here and I'm gonna break those into this measuring cup. My trash can's behind me if you wonder why I keep disappeared off camera. And I'm gonna whisk this up and add that in. I've got two cups of sharp cheddar cheese. You can use any kind of cheddar cheese. I like sharp cheddar. I have one 14.75 ounce can of cream corn. I do not like canned cream corn except for in this cornbread recipe. It really makes all the difference. It is so moist, so good. I'm gonna mix this up. Now I'm gonna take some of these jalapenos that I canned this summer from my garden, some pickled jalapenos. Now this is optional. If you don't like spice, then, then definitely don't add them. I'm gonna take me some of those and give them a, a quick chop with my knife. And I'm gonna add those Mix those in, and i tell you what, I want a little bit more jalapenos than that. Let me take me a few more out here. If y'all been watching me for a while, y'all know I like spicy stuff. But the rest of on my blog, I don't add any jalapenos to it, so this is definitely a, an optional step if you like spice like I do. Now, thankfully, my almost 12-year-old son, he's still loving right now, he likes the spice. So, he'll be happy with the jalapenos. All right, so I have my cast iron skillet hot and greased, and I am going to pour that batter in here. You hear that sizzle, you guys? That's going to give that crust, that's going to make that crust everything. that around in there. I'm gonna put this back in my oven and that's gonna cook in my oven at 400 degrees for about 35 minutes. And my cornbread is out of the oven. I'm gonna set it aside while I get the rest of my food done. Yum. <laughs> so my ribs are out of the oven. It takes off the foil. I'm gonna spread some sauce on here. I've got some local sauce from a barbecue company or a barbecue restaurant I like. Bought some of their sauce because I thought it was so good. Smoky Po' Boys out in Winder, Georgia. And I'm just gonna brush this over. I got my oven set to broil. I'm gonna set these ribs back in the oven just to char up the top of the barbecue sauce. Now, alternate, alternately, you can put them on the grill to get that sear, too. But broil in the oven works just as good. I just took them out, a peek at them. They've been in there for about five minutes. I like a little bit more char on my ribs than that, so I'm gonna pop them back in. And the ribs are out of the oven. I got a little bit of char on there. I like a little bit of char on my ribs, do y'all? <laughs> Slicing them in the meat, it's falling right off. Mm. Oh look, a, a snack for the chef. And my ribs are all plated. Now let me grab my collard greens, my black eyes, and my cornbread. I have my collard greens in this pot. I don't want all the pot liquor in here, so I'm gonna 
scoop the collards out and I'm going to add a little bit of pot liquor on top. Oh, and the, the water or the uh, juice that cooks with the collard greens, that's what we call pot liquor here in the south. Now I'll take me a ladle of this pot liquor and pour that over my greens. Because like I said, I don't want them drowning. But I want some of that. I want some of that pot liquor here because cornbread and that. Mm. <laughs> Here's my black-eyed peas with all that delicious country ham in there, and in my collard greens. And we got the cornbread. And I have some raw onion chopped up. I like that with my black-eyed peas. And dinner, New Year's Day dinner is done. We got some pork ribs, collard greens, some black-eyed peas, and cornbread. And I cook plenty, so we'll have leftovers for tomorrow, too. Have a happy new year, you guys. If you like these recipes, then check out my website, mrshappyhomemaker.com. Till next time, bye, y'all.